I grew up on American culture, of course, in Canada. Uh, I've never seen more drug advertisements in my fucking life. Now, maybe it's because I've lived in socialized countries. I live, like, you know, in Canada, we have socialized medicine. In Britain, we have socialized medicine. We've been waiting for America to join us, but we, but we got, and, I, and, I, and now I witness why, why you can't do it, because there's so much money in drug adverts and shit here. I'm, it, you have commercial breaks. It's illegal in Canada and Britain to advertise drugs to people. You're not, yeah, yeah. you're not allowed to do it. What happens is, if you feel sick, you go to your doctor and you say, Doc, I feel sick, and the doc goes, I think you need some of this, and that's good. But since I've lived here, it fucking blows my mind that you guys don't, it doesn't even, you don't give a shit what your doctor's opinion is. <laughs> Who fucking cares what the doctor thinks? That commercial that I saw in between breaks in the Big Bang Theory told me that if I want to go harder, faster, longer, stronger, I need to tell my doctor that's what I need. That's a fucking, what a wicked culture that is. You guys are in control of your own fucking opioids and you just walk in, Doc, I need some of that shit that I saw during the Big Bang Theory. There was, there was a woman skipping through the rain, she didn't give a shit. That's the kind of optimism I need, Doc. And you don't even have those doctors that go, I don't know, you don't seem like it. No, I need it, Doc. I need it. I need what the commercials told me I need. Fucking get it. No wonder there's an opioid crisis. No wonder we're numb to drug use, period. That Roseanne Barr thing cracked me up. <laughs> cracked me up. Not the fact that she did, you know, a racist tweet, but the fact that she used drugs as an excuse. And in any of the many cultures I've been to, that won't fucking fly. Usually a country's people go, that's not, you, you know, you don't just say, ooh, I was on a sleeping drug and that made me racist. But somehow, <laughs> somehow, here in America, Roseanne did something racist, lost her job, went into panic mode, and said she was on Ambien, and half of America, <laughs> Perfectly just, uh, justifiable, of course, of, of course she did, she was on Ambien, you know, it's, I mean, come on, let's face it, racism is our default position whenever we're on any kind of drugs, right? It's, so it's totally understood, half, half America, that's totally cool, she's on Ambien, that's alright, it's cool to be racist. <laughs> excuse on anything you guys have done. Have you ever gotten that call from a friend and they've said, hey, I'm, I'm sorry that I came to your picnic in blackface, but, but, hear me out, in my defense, I was exhausted. I was, I was so tired, we left the house in a panic, and I just, I forgot that little rule of life, uh, that don't wear a blackface rule. I just, I just slipped. I remember looking in the mirror, getting ready, and thinking, okay, oh, all right, finished shaving, all right, done. Yes, yes, honey, put sunscreen on them. They're as white as the day is young. They're gonna burn. Cover them. Yeah, what am I forgetting? I just can't. Oh, I wish I had more sleep last night, but I can't. There's something. <laughs> Skipping my mind right now. I just what, what could it be? <sighs> I don't know. I'll just go. I'll tell them I was tired if I forgot something. Honey, bring the cross and the gasoline. 